great to be back together uh, with uh, friends that have been uh, learning together for for many years, really, and with new faces as well. We're re really excited to be together. Uh, we thank uh, Susie Handelman for suggesting uh, we put together this uh, this Elul Shir uh, before Rosh Hashanah for the Yomim Noraim, uh, and even through you know this is going to cover Yomim Noraim and even Sukkot to a certain extent. Um, a good a good way to 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 get ready for the this uh, this awesome time together. Uh, the the schedule, the way that we typically do this, is that um, uh, we'll start with a Tefillah Rufuah Shlema for healing for those uh, in our group and in our extended family and friends who need healing. Uh, then I'll present the topic, and uh, basically in the, in the form of a, a shear uh, that runs about a, a little longer than a half an hour, maybe close, almost close to 45 minutes. Uh, uh, we'll meditate together, and then we'll have a time for discussion. Uh, and uh, that's the that will be the, the program. But we'll begin now with Tefillah Rufu Shlema Mishabera for those who are ill. Uh, I'll say the Tefillah and leave a pause for us to insert any names that we want uh, uh, to uh, to daven for uh, any kavanot. That you'd like to have, and then we'll continue with the uh, with the tefillah. Misha Berach Avosinu Abraham Yitzchak Yaakov Moshe Biyaron David Shlomo Sara Rivka Rachel Vileya. We have arech we are pay zecholim v'hachalos. Babusha on Ms. Paulim Baburam. Loza Koshi Mal Rachmi Malahim Lakli Mamal Rakosam. Akhzikam Lakosam, Mishlak Lahim, or four Shalem in Shamayim. The call Abraham Kolgi to him, so Shar Holy Israel, of course a Nefesh, or of course a goof. Hashtab Aglav is Man Kariv in Amar Ame. Okay. So, in this run up to Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, uh, our whole orientation now is towards what we traditionally call tshuva. Uh, our tradition is that this is, this is a time in which we do a cheshbon uh, hanefesh, a self accounting, uh, as we prepare ourselves to do this process called tshuva, which is often mistranslated as repentance, but it's really return. Uh, and the question is, return in what way? Return where? And ultimately, of course, return to whom? How do we do this? Uh, so this is the, the theme that I'd like to, to work through together. Uh, and we'll uh, do a screen share on the text. Uh, hopefully you received it and we're able to look at it so we can kind of move through it uh, together pretty quickly. So we can get our, to our discussion. Okay. Pardon me. Okay. So the Gera Rebbe, Rebbe Huda Arele Alter Ger, uh, I think sets the sets the theme for us in a very succinct way. And, you know, as, as much as uh, you look in, in the, the tefillot, uh, particularly the, um, 
the Tachanunim uh, and the Slichot of this time, and there's a lot of emphasis on uh, on sin, on Averot. Uh, but the Ger Rebbe says the essence of Tshuva is not specifically for sin. I mean, yes, there are details of mistakes that we have made that we want to deal with, acknowledge, regret, move forward in a positive way, uh, and including the vidui, the uh, the confession of these sins or acknowledgement. But this is not the essence of tshuva. Rather, a person needs to return to adhere to their root. That's what tshuva is about. It means return as a return to adhere to our root. And the question is, what is that and where is this coming from? Uh, and he adds, uh, regarding this, sages of blessed memories, is uh, Lakish and the uh, Rabbi Levi and the, uh, the, uh, the Gemara Yoma, they say that Tshuva reaches unto the throne of glory. And this is, in other words, how the the, the Gera Rebbe uh, interprets returning to our root as Tshuva reaches unto the throne of glory. That is, we need to return to the portion that everyone has, the divine soul from above, as it says, unto Hashem your God. So the to unpack this briefly, and then we're going to unpack this deeply, but the the basic point that the Gemara is making, they being the Gemara, uh, is on this verse uh, from Hosea, Shuva Hashem ad Hashem alokecha, Shuva Yisrael ad Hashem alokecha, return Israel unto Hashem your God, ad Hashem alokecha, and uh, Rabbi Levi takes this in a uh, in, uh, ingeniously hyperlitical way, hyperliteral way, Return unto Hashem. The tshuva returns you back to God. And what would that mean? Uh, well, God, in the Merkava vision of Yechezkel, is seated on the Kiseh HaKavod, the throne of glory. And so tshuva reaches unto the throne of glory. Kiseh HaKavod. Okay, and that sounds very uh, mystical and romantic. But it has a very technical meaning as well as we'll see. Uh, this is his understanding of returning to our root, uh, our shorish. So where does this come from and where does he get this? How does he unpack this? The, uh, I would say that the, the, the major connection here is a, a beautiful passage in uh, the uh, Nitivot Alam of the Maharal, with the Maharal notes, and he, the Maharal was a, you know, in 16th century was a philosopher and a Kabbalist, and he kind of presents a um, an accessible uh, philosophical approach to Kabbalah, and he says quite rightly that in Kabbalistic theory, the source of the soul is the throne of glory. We emanate from the throne of glory. The the soul, which is those of us have been together for a while, we we have this definition. The soul, the neshama, is the full structure of consciousness, the full structure of human consciousness. That's the neshama. And that emanates from what's called the kisya kavod, an aspect, a, a deep heavenly aspect. And as we'll find out, even from a higher level than that, our consciousness emanates, extends at every moment from the Kiseh HaKavod, from the throne of glory. So tshuva, in this sense, is a return to our root, which is also called a return to God, and in that sense, return to the throne of glory, which is the source of the soul. Okay, and that's the, the basic structure that the Geir Rebbe is working with. Now we want to take this further. So I thought to uh, introduce a, a passage from the Sodhi Sharim, uh, Many of us have been familiar with uh, working together with uh, on the Beit Yaakov of Ishbitz, uh, the uh, Ishbitz of Rebbe. This is son, the Rebbe Gershom Chanuch Henuch, Soji Sharim, uh, which who picks up on the themes of uh, of 
in Beit Ishbitz. Uh, and here he's uh, looking at the, the key passage uh, for Yom Kippur, uh, which we get you know, the, the, the description of the Avodat Yom Kippurim. We have comes from the, the Torah and Parshat Achremot. Uh, and there, as the Parsha begins, and Hashem spoke to Moshe saying, speak to Aaron, your brother, that he not come at all times to the holy, in other words, to the Mishkan, behind the curtain, in other words, to, to the, uh, the, the Aaron Kodesh that is behind the curtain, that's uh, the place of revelation of Hashem, that he not come at all times, you know, at any old time uh, to do this, except on a special time, Yom Kippur, and in a special way. Okay. The uh, so, and, and then it goes on to describe the the very specific avodat Yom Hakippurim, uh, uh, which is becomes then the basis for what was done in the in the uh, Mishkan and in the uh, Beit Hamikdash. So, Gershon uh, Chanachenach uh, has a very interesting read of this. So he says in the Midrash Torah Kohanim, or the Midrash Halacha, it says. When it says do not come at all times, uh, this refers to Yom Kippur. Um, now, what the Midrash means is that you shouldn't come throughout the whole year. You, the, the Kohen Gadol, the Kohen does not go into the Holy of Holies all year, except on, and the only time he does come is on Yom Kippur. And even on Yom Kippur, he doesn't just walk in. Uh, there's a preparatory avodah that he has to do in order to be in, uh, and earn the right and be entitled to walk in and to do the avodah deep within the, the Holy of Holies, the Kodesh of uh, So don't come at all times, even on Yom Kippur, and especially not any other time. That's, that's in the Torah Kohanim. But the, uh, the Sodya Sharim reads this in a kind of hyper-literal way. And he says, at all times, this is Yom Kippur. For on Yom Kippur, Hashem, who displays the life of Israel explicitly without any garment, just from the depths of their hearts, because on this day Hashem, blessed be He, judges the hearts. The way He reads this is that do not come at all times into the Holy of Holies, except in this way. And Yom Kippur is read as meaning all time, that this is it. Even the, the, the term for Yom Kippur in the Gemara is Yuma, the day. And the, the whole Masecht of Yuma takes us through the entire day of Yom Kippur in detail. And Yom Kippur, in this sense, is understood by the Sodya Shorim as essentially the eternal moment. You know, this is the eternal present that stands behind all consciousness at all times. Yom Kippur puts us in touch with the eternal present. We get a taste of Hashem's eternal present. Because Hashem on this day connects with us, ex sort of displays us without any garments. We are spiritually open, totally. And down to the very depths of our hearts. And this, by the way, I think is important to remember. For on this day, Hashem, blessed be He, judges the hearts. Uh, there's, a, again, in the, in the Nusach HaTfilah, in the liturgy, and in a lot of the discussions of Yom Kippur, there's a focus on, you know, uh, kapara from sin, sin, sin. And you get into the details of that. And all of the the uh, the viduyim, the, the al-chait, the clapping al-chait, you know, it's about this thing you did wrong and that thing you did wrong. But underneath it all, the Rebbe is reminding us, it's really about your heart. Judging your heart consciousness, your emotional uh, maturity, your emotional awareness. Uh, we've talked about this issue of not only uh, cognitive consciousness, but deep heart consciousness, which puts us in touch with the meaning of life and the meanings of what is, you know, the, the, the experiences that we have. Uh, this is really what Yom Kippur is about. Uh, and as, we, as you go through the day, you know, see if you can also connect with your heart 
to Hashem on this day. Open your heart to him. Okay, that's what it's about. And so then the Ishbitzer Rebbe says, and Am Yisrael has a special zechut on this day, for in the depths of our hearts, we are in truth pure. And with a very interesting phrase here, on account of their mother. Now, who is that? Uh, it could be Sarah Imenu, or Rivka, or Leah, or Rachel. Um, but in Kabbalistic terms, it's also the sphere of Bina is our mother. We emanate from the sphere of Bina, uh, which is the, the, you know, the divine Neshama. Uh, so uh, in the depths of our hearts, there is a purity to each one of us, no matter how tangled up our lives have gotten, how confused we feel. Uh, how difficult things have become. At our core, there's a truth and a purity. And that's what we want to get in touch with, you know, on, a, it's on account of our source. And this, is what, and this is what we want to get in touch with on these days, on Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and on beyond. And so we take our stand before Hashem without any garment. And he explains here that uh, sort of a, um, an exp the experience of this on Yom Kippur itself, uh, which is meant to sort of prime the pump to give us a sense of stripping away garments, is th these are the five abst abstentions, not to eat or drink, uh, not to uh, wash, you know, not, you know, not to anoint, not to put on shoes, leather shoes, not to wear leather shoes, and not to have marital relations. These five categories of abstentions become kind of a, a, a symbolic of s all the stripping away of garments that we do on Yom Kippur, in including the mistakes that we made, um, any any issues of rigidity or stiffness within our personalities, anything that that is holding us back in our uh, in our development, any traumas that we're stuck with and uh, that we need somehow to to cathartically release. Stripping away these garments. That's what Yom Kippur is about. Even to the point that, you know, that we deliver all the garments to Hashem and do not set up from our side, from their side, even a receptive vessel, except for what Hashem prepares for them as a receptive vessel. What does he mean? In other words, not only do we get try to strip away all garments that block us, you know, and, and cover our hearts from opening to Hashem. But even our ability to receive from Hashem, to see, you know, inspiration or in so flight of the infinite, all forms of, re of reception of spiritual, you know, blessing, even that, we realize on Yom Kippur, Hashem gives us that. You know, this, the, the level of introspection that he's talking about here is to realize, this, this is a theme that we've, we've um, returned to many times, to realize that absolutely every aspect of our being comes from and is supported at every moment by Hashem. Everything. We're doing very, very little here to remain in this reality. You know, you, you know the way I say it. You know, what are we doing to be here? We're, we're, you just have to breathe, eat and drink, watch where you walk, and you can be here for a lifetime. It's all it is. Everything else is being done for you. We're not doing anything. Everything's being provided. At every moment, I mean, the, the way that our bodies are working right now and the way that our minds are working and the, and the, the thoughts that are coming to us is, where do we get this from? We don't make this. We don't create any of this. We, and we're just kind of riding it all. And that's the point that he's making. And even the ability to receive our, our receptive vessel, what is that? that? That's our consciousness, particularly our cognitive consciousness, our emotional consciousness. That's where we receive from Hashem, even that does not come from us. Even that is not really ours except on loan. 
Now, that doesn't mean that we don't exist. That we are, as we said, very much here, but every aspect of our being is a gift from Hashem at every moment. Even our ability to receive and to even think about this is a gift from Hashem at every moment. This is radical, you know, Ishbit's Torah. It's also radically true and experientially true. And it's to this level that he's asking us to go and that in fact we go on Yom Kippur. And this is reflected in the verse here in the, in the Torah. So Hashem says, spoke to Moshe, speak to Aaron, your brother, that he not come at all times to the holy, you know, the Mishkan and to the holy of holies behind the curtain. Rather with this shall Aharon come, Zot Evo Aharon, and this in Kabbalistic terms, this is Ze'eli, or this, that which we can point to, refers to the Shekhinah, to Malchut, uh, in, this, in terms of, of, of Sfirot. This refers to the quality of Malchut, and if you have a little bit of Kabbalistic background or more, um, Malchut has nothing of its own. This is the, the, it is all receptive. The, the late la mi garma klum, the late le mi garma klum. And this is the spiritual awareness and posture that we are accessing on Yom Kippur to receive that even the receptive vessel to receive light is also not from our side, the side of the person, but what Hashem sets up and prepares on our behalf. That's what stripping away all garments is about. That recognition, total openness, recognition, it's all from Hashem. So then what? You know, with that recognition, where, where does that get us? Okay. This is uh, a passage then a little further on in Soja Sharim. Uh, so the Rebbe here is saying, he's bringing the, the beautiful, beautiful Mishnah at the end of the Gemara Yuma, the Mishnah Yuma, um, from Rabbi Akiva. It says, fortunate are you, Israel, before whom are you purified on Yom Kippur, and who is it that purifies you? It's Avichem Sheba Shamayim, your Father in heaven. As I said, I've sprink I have sprinkled upon you pure water, and you shall be pure. And he says, Mikveh Yisrael Hashem, nice pun from Rabbi Akiva. Uh, Mikveh Yisrael Hashem, in context from Yechezkel, is God is the hope of Israel, Mikveh. But in mikveh, same letter in, you know, letters and word as mikvah, Hashem is like our mikvah on Yom Kippur. Just as a mikvah, it purifies the impure, so Kaddish Baruch Hu purifies Israel. On Yom Kippur, the image is we are immersed in Hashem and purified. So, the Ishbitzer Rebbe then says, so what's the, the underlying dynamic here? Hashem being compared to a mikvah? The issue is that all that is still connected to the source is not subject to any impurity. Okay, the, and, and this is a, an aspect of, uh, of uh, the halachot of mikvahot, halachot mikvahot, that you know, as long as you are connected to the water that is sufficient Volume for mikvah, or volume sa, forty sa. Uh, as long as you're connected to that, you are connected to the source of purity. Where does that get us, though? I mean, where? Yes, we're connected to this source, but when we are connected to the source, what does this source do for us? What? You know, and is this our source? Is this the source of our source? And what's the experience of being connected to our source? So here, we go to uh, a passage that uh, some of us have seen before, uh, but it's a, uh, it deserves profound, not just uh, uh, insight, but contemplation. Uh, Rav Chaim Vital, in his pre Chaim, it's a similar passage also in Dara Kavanot, uh, notes that you know, when, we, when we 
pray the prayer services, we have what's called Nusach HaKeva, a fixed liturgy. Uh, so uh, you know, throughout the weekday, we pray the, the same Shemona Esrei, the Amidah, um, over and over again, three times a day. Uh, on Shabbat, on Yom Tov, uh, we have different, a different liturgy, but we, on every Shabbat, we pray the same liturgy. Uh, every Yom Tov, the same one. So you might come to think that every time we repeat a prayer, we're accessing the same consciousness. And Rav Chaim Vital's point is no. Each and every prayer service from the beginning of the world to this moment and ever on, for each and every prayer service, completely new consciousness is innovated. And you don't have any prayer service for which there is no innovation. Right then, of completely new lights, and lights, as you know, was a, a, a metaphor for consciousness and infusion of consciousness. The conclusion of the matter, do you, not, you do not have any prayer from the day the world was created until the future to come that resembles its counterpart at all. The unfolding of spiritual awareness is constant newness, constantly new. And that's, I mean, and, and even though we might be saying the same words, and you know this in your own experience, even though you might be saying the same words over and over, your awareness in every prayer service is different. And in fact, the very fact that we're saying the same words, a fixed liturgy, highlights the fact that your awareness of that is different every time. And the, the meanings and the way that the, you know, the, the, the tefillot uh, reach you and the, the way they touch you and they move you, are always different each time. Now, the basis for this, Chaim Vital goes even deeper in, in Eitz Chaim itself, and he says, not only is every prayer service a different consciousness, but in each and every moment, the worlds change. And this moment does not resemble that moment. And from the beginning of reality to now and on to the end of all reality, no moment will be the same. And he says, I want you to understand this in terms of the supernal world, which have no limit or number. And, you know, if you really understand this, there's not sufficient intellect in the heart of human being to comprehend all the details. This entire reality is changing and transforming at every instant. It's no moment, no consciousness is the same from moment to moment to moment. I mean, uh, and, and this is true on the physics level. You know, as we know now that, you know, this reality that we think is somewhat stable is really packaged, you know, energy. It's, you know, quantum field theory. It's, it's not even particles, we understand. It's waves that are constantly interacting, never repeating the combinations, changing at every moment. You know, on the biological level, you know, our, our, all of our cells are metabolizing furiously and changing at every moment. You know, and, you know, our minds themselves, as much as we try to keep a stability of consciousness, we know your minds are, our minds are flowing and changing every moment. Consciousness is flowing every moment. We are in the midst of and part of constant change, and we are changing. So on the basis of this, I know how to, experience this, uh, the Pinchas of Koretz and, and Pinchas says, you know, he quotes a passage from the Zohar Chadash. It's, it's, he says there's a mayor, it looks like in, in our version it has a Yabahu, but the passage is the passage. There is no person whose soul doesn't teach him at every moment and every instant, but it never repeats. Our Nishamot are revealing to us at every moment, at every instant, and never repeat. So if we put all this together, what's the basis of tshuva? What is tshuva? It's a return to our source. The Ishbitz, the Rebbe says, what that means is we're stripping away all the garments. What are these garments? As, as much as we are changing and all of reality is changing around us constantly, in every possible dimension, there's an aspect of our minds that 
tries to hold on to stability. And it, it, we're built this way. It's not a bad thing. It's, it, there's a sense of identity and stability, and that's a great mystery that there is such a thing, such a sense of identity and stability. Uh, at another time, we can talk about this. We hinted at it before. This is what Shabbat is about. Shabbat is that reality holds still in the midst of furious change, which it is doing. But we, though everything is changing and we're alive and, we're, and our consciousness is transforming at every moment and changing, we have these ways of thinking and behaving and perceiving ourselves and perceiving others that tend to be somewhat fixed, very fixed. And we try to establish stability and identities and we try to orient within this reality. And that's important. That's a part of, you know, a, a part of you know, our existence here in this reality. But sometimes we can get too stiff about that or go too far. Uh, sometimes we get stuck in certain ways of thinking, uh, patterns of thinking. Uh, we get uh, uh, certain traumas that can uh, can uh, freeze us in uh, in certain patterns of thought, uh, or you know, or bad habits of thought that freeze us in certain patterns of thought, and we get to then construct identities that are perhaps not who we really are, or too stiff, or or you know, just too rigid in certain ways, and what this is reminding us that what uh, the Sodhya Sharim, the Ishbitsa Rebbe is reminding us is that, you know, all these aspects of what we think are our little identities and, you know, the things we are rigidly stuck on and stiff about, these are garments. Uh, you know, even our neurological systems tend to, to, to favor patterns and rep repetitive patterns. But this tracks us in certain ways, and these become garments, external aspects that uh, sometimes can be protective. Sometimes pr that protection becomes self-defeating in certain ways. So Yom Kippur, at least, and really our spiritual progress in general, is a process of stripping away these garments, these rigidities, these occlusions, everything that blocks us. Uh, and realizing that underneath all of this we're changing at every moment the world around us is changing and through us and in us is changing at every moment our consciousness is changing this is what life is 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 a constant you know organized organ sort of an organic change it's held in place while it's furiously changing at the same time that's the, the mystery of our lives. So the process of getting back to our root, in the sense our root, says the, uh, the, the Geir Rebbe, is at the Kisei HaKavod, is the, the, is the, uh, use, using the Gemara from Yuma. The, this is to return to our source, meaning the source of our cognitive consciousness that is always changing it's not only alive it's deeper than life itself it is constantly changing constantly being refreshed and renewed every moment every instant we're alive we're happening we're not stuck and so the shuva as return is return to the pure source of our consciousness stripping away all external rigidities all patterns of thought till we get to pure consciousness itself then to recognize that our pure consciousness and everything else about us is sourced not by us. It's sourced from Hashem. It's what call, it's called in Kabbalistic terms, Kisi Kavod, God's throne of glory. God's throne of glory is the consciousness that God emanates and shares with all sentient beings. And in fact, all beings beyond sentient beings. That's the throne of glory, the glory that you know of God, God's sharing of consciousness throughout all of reality. So that the return to our source, which means stripping away everything that's external to the, get to the to our hearts, the source of consciousness, is to also the source of consciousness itself from Hashem.
And that's what it means, you know, Shuva Yisrael Ad Hashem Elokecha, return Israel unto Hashem, unto your sense that you are fully sourced at every instant from Hashem. That's the theory. So what we want to do here, though, is to try to experience this a bit in meditation. So I brought two meditations, which I hopefully have had a look at. And we've seen these before in other contexts, but we're going to kind of get to the heart of them in, in this session. Um, there are really two takes on the same meditation, from, one from Rabbeinu Azriel from 13th century, one from Menachem Rekhanadi in the 14th century, uh, expressed in similar ways. Rabbeinu Azriel consciousness extends to the place of its coming forth, to its source, and therefore the early righteous ones would elevate thought to the place of thoughts coming forth. Now, the word thought, machshava here, is, he's using it in two different ways. One is thoughts, which are, in other words, cognitive contents, when you think in, you know, in uh, verbal or conceptual terms. And then machshava in the more general sense, as we would translate as consciousness, which is the background of all specific thinking. So elevate their thought in general, to the place of its coming forth, which is the source of consciousness itself at that, at that boundary. Hearing intensely, the recollection and thought of hearing intensely, from this, the spherot would be blessed and increased from the cessation of thinking of thought. In other words, when we stop thinking in conceptual, discursive, verbal terms and access pure consciousness, everything gets blessed. Like a person who opens a pool of water, it spreads here and there. This is the spring that does not stop. We access the constant flow, so to speak, of consciousness, the constant change. In a similar sense, Menachem Rekhanadi, and he's referencing this passage from uh, Rabbeinu Israel, which he knows. Massive consciousness, a person, uh, person's consciousness is the source of the cognitive soul. It's in the Shema. It's drawn from there. And it has the power to ascend and attain up to the place of its coming forth. When it arrives there, it receives the supernal light, known also as Or Ein Sof, light of the infinite. Light of Hashem, light of the infinite. And it, this and that become one thing. The consciousness returns, you know, as we realize we are re receiving Or Ein Sof, and yet in in our identity, in our bodies in this world. We, br we bring a sense of the divine presence below. It spreads where you're sitting, and the righteous ones, when they would adhere consciousness to supernal things, draw the supernal light down. And from this, the sefirot are increased and multiplied. And he gives examples of this um, from miracles of um, uh, Eliyahu and Navi, where the, where um, the flask of oil did not cease, a jar of flour, belly out. Uh, in other words, things that are constantly changing and increasing and being blessed. So, both Rabbeinu Israel, Rabbi Menachem Rekhanadi, describe a certain meditation, a traditional Kabbalistic meditation, of returning to the source of your consciousness. We have done forms of this, those of us who have meditated together for a couple of years now, uh, from the, like the meditation of Rav Chaim Vital, to the Shoresh uh, Neshama, or the meditation of the Shar HaKavana, all of them quite similar, where we've traveled from, we clear our minds and then we travel imaginatively through the, the structure of the Sfirot, to then to remain at Keter, to receive Oren Sof, so to speak, which is awareness of being uh, that our consciousness is sourced. It's not, it's not an image of receiving anything. It becomes real awareness that our consciousness is sourced. Um, Ein Sof, God the Infinite. And then to bring that down through the level of the sphero. Now, in this meditation, you know, this is actually not mentioned by Rabino Israel or Rav Menachem Rekhanadi. They don't mention traveling through the sphero and back down. Uh, that's something that, uh, developed in a different tradition, and uh, Rav Chaim Vital picks up from that. It was from the uh, Huga Iyun. They just mentioned going to the source of your consciousness. 
we can do this directly. And I, I, what I would suggest for our meditation in this session is not to inject the imaginative level. Uh, there's reasons why I think it's th th there are advantages to that. And then there are sort of ways in which going through an imaginative journey before you get to or in self narrows your vision. All we'd like to do at this point in this session is a pure hashkata meditation, quieting the mind, as Rabbeinu Azriel says, from the cessation of thinking to appreciate that our consciousness, our pure consciousness itself, is constantly flowing. And if even flow is a metaphor, because uh, it's not, we're not talking about plumbing here, but it's constantly changing. Consciousness itself is changing at every instant. It is constant change and constant opening to reality. And that's a metaphor too. We want to be in touch with this. And actually it's a, it's a very pleasant, even blissful experience. So it's going to be a very straightforward Hashkata meditation, but literally let me just describe it for everyone and I'm going to do it. The We'll sit quietly, upright in our chairs or however you're sitting, uh, eyes closed. Begin by just becoming aware of everything happening in you and around you. Our breathing, the sounds that are around us, you know, heartbeat, uh, sense of you know, any, any physical sensations, any auditory sensations, any olfactory sensation, everything that you can sense all at once happening around you. Quieting thought, and in this case, we're not looking to stop thinking. We're looking at actually the Piazzetta Rebbe says it this way. We're actually looking to be aware of even the thinking that's going on, the fact that your mind is moving, that thoughts are flowing through the mind. Let it flow. Be aware of all that is flowing in us and around us. You know, all the sensations that you're sensing in you and around you, they're changing at every instant. You know, your eyes are closed. There are lights flashing on your, you know, from your retina on your, you know, through your eyelids, but uh, on your retina. At every instant, it's constantly changing. Your breathing, constantly changing. Heartbeat, constantly changing. Thinking. The flow of thoughts, constant change. And then if you can get even quieter, to quiet even that flow of thoughts, to even just becoming aware of it will quiet it down. To appreciate the pure consciousness itself that is behind all this, that is the freedom for change. How is tshuva possible? Because change is happening all the time. You, we are not stuck. We can change because we are changing all the time. We have habits that we think that, uh, you know, are, you know, um, holding us back. We have attitudes. We have ways of thinking that we think are too rigid or holding us back. We have traumas that are holding us back. We're changing all the time. The possibility to do tshuva is because Hashem is changing us at every instant. And we want to be in touch with that. And you can do it uh, as, you know, not shutting anything out just appreciating everything happening in us and around us, including the flow of thought, including the flow of consciousness, the sense of life itself. This is what we're looking for. If the heart consciousness, feel it, sense this in your heart, what's happening here. You're gifted with the freedom of change, which gives us the freedom to change, the freedom to do tshuva. Okay? I hope that's you know, uh, en enough guidance for that. Uh, We'll now, you know, take two minutes for those who need to get up and refresh themselves. Uh, if anyone has a question just on the method here, I'll take a question um, and then we'll go into the meditation. Just two minutes for people to refresh themselves if necessary. And then we, we go into the meditation. Let me just stop share here. Okay, is anyone unclear about the, the simple, quieting Hashkata meditation? Letting everything flow and, and appreciating with your heart, we are flowing. Okay, let's, uh...
Mayor? Yeah. When you say appreciate with the heart, how do we, you know, drop into the heart as opposed to having a an intellectual appreciation? Yeah, it's a great question. It's it's always it's so hard to describe, uh, Janet. The the in, in a certain sense, try to feel, you know, even just of course the heart is not the the organ that pumps blood, but it's it's our solar plexus and our lungs and this whole this whole area, the energy, you know, the energetic heart, in a sense, the emotional heart. Uh, it's you know to 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 kind of con connect with it. Try to sense not only that you're feeling the flow of everything, but that the meaningfulness of this. This is the gift of our lives. This is the gift of our of our awareness, uh, and to feel this as a gift. Uh, and it begins to, you know, we begin to sense the emotional meaning of our existence and not just the fact of it. Okay. Um, you know, it's, for this, it's, it's some, some meditations which, in which we try to, 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 um, to stop thinking or to focus on some concept, uh, actually, uh, hide us from this more open sense of the heart. This is a very open, relaxed meditation in which we, Try to to appreciate the the giftedness of all of this, uh, and it's it's a blissful you know, look. It's a blissful sense. It's a deeply grateful sense. Uh, so these things, th these kinds of awareness can help kind of begin to put us in touch with the heart, um, the sense of love of Hashem. Okay, uh, it's something. Play around with it. Try different things. Try, try you know maintaining a sense of openness while you're sensing all of the the flow around you and appreciating, wow, this reality is happening. It's flowing. Okay. Something like that. All right, here we go for, make it for 10 minutes, a um, little bit more, a 12 minute meditation. It's just Hashkata. Uh, at the end, I'll end it with a nigun. Okay, so you'll hear that, uh, that happening. Um, and, uh, and then we'll have our discussion at the end. Okay, if everyone can mute uh, for now and Be'ezrat Hashem, together, Hashkata.
Adon Haslichot Bochein Levavot Gole Amukot Dover Tzedakot Chatanu Lefanecho Rachem Aleinu Chatanu Lefanecho Rachem Aleinu Kore Adorot Rochev Arabot Shomei Atefilot Tamim Deot Chatanu Lefanecho Rachem Aleinu Chatanu lefanecho Rachem aleinu So this is the possibility for tshuva. This is the source of tshuva, that we receive from Or Ein Sof, Hashem's infinite consciousness at every instant. Constant change. It's life, flow, atzilut, you know, emanation, Hashem's consciousness to, into our consciousness on our little level. But that gives us the, the ground for the possibility of change because we are changing at every instant. And if in this season of Tshuva we can tap into this, which is what the Kumalim and the Hasidim call returning to our source, to realize we are sourced with constant change, we can you know, melt some of the, the frozen parts of ourselves, you know, get some flexibility in those rigid, rigid places in our personalities, fix mistakes by realizing we're not stuck to them you know you're free of them and it's it's a freedom to change that we're receiving at every moment so uh, this is the part of our session where we open it up to uh to discussion uh any insights 